they are leaving their mark on the international system. BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa are preparing for their next summit. Since we wrapped up the invasion of Ukraine, BRICS actually gained a second momentum. Now there are calls for the group to grow. We should start discussions around BRICS expansion. But what exactly is BRICS and what does it want? They take on a very big mission, which is to diversify the existing uh, Western-led global financial system. Lack of unity, lack of cohesion, uh, you know, mutual suspicion, all these things are very much there in, in, in within BRICS. Well, the application of uh, even more countries wanting to join signifies that there's something that the BRICS is doing right. Despite hurdles, this group has been working together for 15 years now. Raising concerns in the West. Ironically, the seeds for BRICS were sown at a US investment bank. In 2001, an economist at Goldman Sachs pointed out the fast growth rates in Brazil, Russia, India and China, coining the acronym BRIC. Even though their economies have slowed down since, these countries took the idea and ran with it. What they created is not an international organization, but a platform for cooperation and exchange between the governments. In this way, it's similar to G7, the group of the most developed countries. BRIC leaders gathered for the first time in 2009, shortly after the start of the global financial crisis. South Africa joined two years later, adding the S to BRICS. The global financial crisis really made members of uh, the emerging market, members of the um, global south, started to question the relevance and the trustworthiness of, and the credibility of the US-led global financial system. Dominance of the US and Europe in institutions like the World Bank and International Monetary Fund, both based in Washington DC, particularly draws criticism from BRICS. One cannot deny that the global system now is characterized by some unfairness um, no equality between countries of the developing South and countries of de the developed North. Uh, there are deep uh, shortcomings in the current international architecture, which does not reflect today's politics, economics, demographics and aspirations. This imbalance is illustrated by a comparison with the G7 group. Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom and the United States. Whereas the G7 makes up 10% of the global population, BRICS countries are home to 41% of all the people in the world. But still, some 43% of the world's GDP is concentrated in the G7 countries, whereas BRICS account for over a quarter of the world's economy. To make their voice stronger, BRICS have used a twofold strategy. On the one hand, they lobby for reforms of the World Bank and the IMF. On the other hand, they put forward their own institutions, like the New Development Bank, which opened in 2017. It finances development projects in member states, such as electric buses in Brazil, a hydropower plant in Russia, or water supply in India. And it does so in a way that often suits these countries better. So just the architecture of the New Development Bank is, is, is one that is very different from the other uh, financing institutions. The IMF or the World Bank uh, have something called the Structural Adjustment uh, 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 Program. So we see that as a conditionality. You getting this finance, but this is what you need to change in your country. So it's kind of just imposing themselves on those individual countries. And we see that a lot in African countries who are, uh, are borrowers in these institutions. So that's the, that's the key difference is that the new development bank does not provide conditionalities. The bank also promotes the use of national currencies of BRICS members. Both the NDB, the new development bank and the individual BRICS members have this shared uh, interest, which is to create an alternative financial system by using local currency in trade, in investment, in developing their own local currency bond market. But BRICS is operating in the real world international financial system, in which the dollar is still king. So ever since Russia was sanctioned for invading Ukraine, the BRICS bank has stopped financing projects in Russia to avoid being sanctioned itself. The idea of a common currency has been repeatedly floated, but has yet to gain any political traction. 
So in the economic field, BRICS is both proposing reforms of the existing system and alternatives to it at the same time. Can this approach work in the political area as well? Despite setbacks, BRICS members have stuck together even after Russia attacked Ukraine. Most notably, China, India and South Africa abstained from condemning Russia in the United Nations. But the fact that BRICS consists of five very different countries with often diverging interests limits the scope of their political cooperation. BRICS is not a, a formal alliance. So it's not the same as NATO, it's not the same as a formal alliance to the same extent as a security pact. Rather, it is an informal partnership. The idea is that members can share the BRICS platform to talk about certain issues of their shared interests, but and every country have a veto power. And in areas where they do not have mutual interest or where there are divergences, they actually then revert back to their national interests and national approaches. This has particularly been the case between India and China in recent years. Border skirmishes like this one have put the two most populous nations on earth at loggerheads. They kept meeting at BRICS summits, but slowed down each other's ideas. So, while Russia and China are now in rising tensions with the West, India is doing a balancing act. So for India, you know, BRICS and G7 uh, are not in contradiction to each other. India has been seeking greater partnership with the US, with Japan, with Western Europe in order to, su uh, to support its, its development process. Um, and, you know, India believes that these countries, uh, you know, might, may be in relative decline, but they still remain the key source of capital, technology, markets, you know, on which India, uh, 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 on, on which India can depend on, on where it can seek access to. An issue that shows different priorities among BRICS members is a possible expansion of the group. South Africa said over 40 countries have expressed interest in joining it. Among them are countries like Argentina, Saudi Arabia and Indonesia. An enlargement has been promoted by China, but discouraged by India, which sees it as strengthening Beijing's influence. Many in China uh, uh, felt that by limiting BRICS mechanism to the original five members, um, is reducing its uh, its overall global influence, its right to speak at the at the global platforms. Um, also, in the backdrop of the intensifying China-U.S. competition, it is uh, trying to get more and more emerging economies from all over the world to join China's supply chain. Whatever the outcome of their negotiations. The discussion shows that BRICS might usher in the creation of a wider international bloc of countries in the Global South. Could this work? And over the years, we've seen the, the BRICS agenda expanding. So it's not just about economic diplomacy, but actually it is emerging as, as, as a bloc that looks at all critical areas of international cooperation. Uh, there is um, a lack of um, identity. Uh, you know, uh, there is uh, less cohesion uh, in terms of, uh, you know, decision making. So these are the shortcomings that BRICS is facing right now. And that is one of the reasons why some of its member states are so uh, um, uh, you know, uh, there's, uh, they're so interested in expanding the scope of uh, BRICS to, to address these challenges. The fact that these leaders continue meeting despite differences shows that BRICS is here to stay. For people who believe that BRICS perhaps is in the past or as a group they, already, they, they are no longer relevant, actually they are very much relevant and um, at various levels, those heads of state and at working group level, Peop, uh, the BRICS people actually meet hundreds of times per year. So what do you think about BRICS and its impact in the world? Let us know in the comments.